Hello everyone and welcome to the daily newspaper analysis which is brought to you by Law Seco. Today we will be covering the news articles and news points for 29 December 2022. So we have an editorial that we have taken from the Hindu newspaper which has been titled as a failed attempt at the decriminalization. So this actually talks about the recent bill that was uh, brought into news uh, that was that we'll be discussing in detail and why it is actually said that it is failing at the very purpose of decriminalization. Secondly, we'll cover the news update and thirdly, the daily news for the day. So the article says that last week, the union government tabled the Jan Vishwas Bill 2022, which please consider is still a bill in the parliament with the objective of decriminalizing 183 offenses across 42 legislations and enhancing the ease of living and doing business in India. So basically what the purpose of this bill was that uh, many uh, things or many steps or many kinds of activities that earlier must might be counted under as a criminal act which would actually reduce the uh, effectiveness of any particular act or increase the friction specifically in the terms of ease of living or even doing business in India, they were sought to be decriminalized through this particular bill. Now, it is a welcome move and can be viewed as an attempt to reverse the trend of over-criminalization because many times there are some steps that are necessary to be taken and that they are not even as criminal in nature as the charges may seem to be. But because of those kinds of legislations available, the process becomes very tedious. But this would be a welcome step in making the things and the business process specifically very, very smooth. Now, however, the parliament also needs to exercise precaution in ensuring that efforts to make such de decriminalization are also inst institutionalized, which means that it's not just on paper or just on for the sake of, you know, being a parliament bill or an act. Rather, they are brought as in, you know, the spirit of the institutions as well, and they are uh, completely uh, implemented uh, in that very uh, limit as well. So the Jan Vishwas bill either omits the penal provisions or replaces them with fines in legislation such as the Air Act, Environment Protection Act, Forest Act, Drugs and Cosmetics Act, among the several others. Let's see in detail. Firstly, the bill has undertaken what we may refer to as quasi-decriminalization, which means that the decriminalization is not in the exact form of decriminalization or it's not absolute, rather it's like a quasi-form. We can understand this in the direction that uh, in, in, when we talk about the federalism in India, we say that India is a quasi-federal country, which means that it has uh, some, uh, you know, uh, characteristics of a federal uh, federal, uh, federal uh, country and some characteristics of a unitary nation as well. So similarly, it says that this kind of decriminalization is rather a quasi-decriminalization. Why so? That the bill further dilutes the boundaries between regulatory offenses and penal offenses as well. So there would be definitely, there could be ambiguity in the coming times when it comes to the penal offenses that are there by the nature penal or regulatory offenses, which are, you know, uh, by the terms for the regulation of some particular rule of order. Secondly, the Observer Research Foundation's report titled Jailed for Doing Business found that there are more than 26,134 imprisonment clauses in a total of uh, 843 economic legislations, rules and regulations which seek to regulate business and economic activities in India. So we definitely know that there is a vast area that needs to be brought under this decriminalization. If at all, we really want it to function to the best of its spirit. Nextly, in this light, the number of offences deregulated under the bill seems to be a mere drop in India's regulatory framework. But, you know, the practical numbers need to be better for that uh, real use. Thirdly, the regulatory offences to be considered for decriminalization needs to be prioritized not only from the point of view of the ease of doing business, but also from the points of view of the ills that plague our criminal justice system as well. So basically, it's just not that or anything that, you know, uh, will um, hinder the business, only that should be uh, brought under the light. But also, if there are any problems or issues in the criminal justice system as well, delay being the, you know, the biggest one, if you would, we were to discuss a few. So these things also need to be taken care of. And lastly, the bill confirms to the understanding of the government that decriminalization should be limited to regulatory domain. So basically, there should be some homework probably that we can see that needs to be done before the government in real wants to take some action, because only then some uh, substantial changes or substantial growth can be seen when it comes to the ease of doing business or ease of living. Otherwise, it will uh, it might turn out to be a futile exercise in the future. So the intent of the bill is merely to ensure that imprisonment is replaced with fines for as many offences as possible and the extent to which it succeeds in decriminalizing offences, however, is questionable. Now, if these faults are to be rectified, it is pertinent that a more comprehensive exercise is undertaken and that the government prioritizes the needs and requirements of the criminal justice system as we were discussing just in the previous slide. 
On this note, let's see what do we have for news updates today. Firstly, South Korea pardons former leader Myung Bak Lee for corruption crimes. So the South Korean government of uh, President Yoon Suk Yeol granted a special pardon to ex-president Lee Myung Bak, who was sentenced to a 17-year prison term for a range of corruption crimes. The CEO turned conservative hero had been convicted of taking bribes from big businesses, including Samsung, embezzling funds from a company that he owned and other corruption related crimes before and during his presidency from 2008 to 2013. He was South Korea's first president with a business background and once symbolized the country's economic rights. Secondly, Power Ministry, DRDO, signed MOU. So, Ministry of Power has signed a Memorandum of Understanding with Defence Research and Development Organisation. So, Ministry of Defence on 27 December 2022 for implementation of early warning system for vulnerable hydro projects or power stations. Basically, this is a very good step in the terms of disaster management and even being prepared as a precautionary term for the disaster management, if at all there is any calamity especially in the terms of the hydropower or power, hydro projects or power stations. So uh, if we say uh, the EWS is an, uh, that is an early warning system, please do not take it as the economically weaker section. Do not be confused with this. This is the early warning system. It is an integrated system of hazard monitoring, forecasting and prediction, disaster risk assessment, communication and preparedness for timely action to reduce disaster risks in advance of hazardous events. Ministry of Power has already signed MOUs with the CSIR and GRI, IMD, that is India Meteorological Department, uh, WIHD and NRSC ISRO for implementation of the early warning system. Thirdly, Madhya Pradesh government to build Atal Bihari Vajpayee's grand memorial in Gwalior. So a huge statue of former Prime Minister Atal Bihari Vajpayee will be installed and a research centre will be built as part of his grand memorial in Gwalior. The Madhya Pradesh government has allotted nearly 4,050 hectares of land in Sirol area of Gwalior to build a memorial of Vajpayee. Fourthly, FSSAI, FSSAI gives five-star rating to UP's Bulansheher prison for food quality, which is actually a big achievement, I would say. Bulansheher jail in Uttar Pradesh has been awarded a five-star rating by the Food Safety and Standards Authority of India, keeping in mind the quality, storage and hygiene of the food cooked over there. The FSSAI, that is the Food Safety and Standards Authority of India, team inspected the kitchen's food quality, storage and hygiene on stringent measures based on which the Bulansheh prison was given a five-star rating, the Eat Right Campus tag in addition to the remark of excellent by FSSAI, which is very good. And I think uh, all the jails uh, in India, they should be taking inspiration from Bulansheh jail because whatever be the case, even though they are prisoners, but they are there, they're, they're serving their term and that is why they should be uh, given, uh, you know, good food, good quality food, which is ultimately their fundamental right to life as well. Fifthly, Indian cyclist Swasti Singh gets 38th Ekalabya, uh, Ekalabya Puruskar. So international cyclist Swasti Singh has been honoured with the prestigious 38th Ekalabya Puruskar for the year 2022. The award is instituted by IMFA's charitable wing Impact. So promising international footballer Pyari is uh, Zaza and a budding international hockey player Shailanand Lakra also received the felicitation during the occasion. Both received cash prize of rupees 50,000 each along with citations. Sixth, Elida Guevara to be honored with first K.R. Gauri Amma International Award. So noted Cuban social worker and human rights advocate, Almeida Guevara has been selected for the first K.R. Gauri Amma National Award instituted by the K.R. Gauri Amma Foundation. The award comprising $3,000 is a statute and citation will be given away by Chief Minister Pinaray Vijayan at a foundation to be held here to be held on January 5th. Dr. Alida is also an active member of the Cuban Medical Mission that works to improve the health profile of children in Latin America. Now let's see what do we have for legal updates today. Firstly, removing dead body from scene of murder to another place doesn't come under ambit of Section 201 of the IPC, says the Allahabad High Court. So explaining the scope of Section 201 of the Indian Penal Code, the Allahabad High Court recently observed that removing the corpse of a murdered man from the scene of the murder to another place does not come within its ambit as the removal does not cause a disappearance of evidence of the commission of the murder. This was held in the case of Gulam Rashul versus State of UP. 
This was all for today. We hope you liked the session. Thank you so much for staying tuned with Law Seco. If you wish to download the PDF of today's slides, you can join our Telegram channel. The link is there in the description box below, or you can also scan this QR code that you can see on your screens right now. Thank you so much.